Breaking news. There are pro-Palestinian protests across the United States spreading violent clashes today between police and students at USC and UT Austin, where more than 20 people were arrested. This follows protests at NYU, Brown University, and Columbia University, where an encampment has taken over part of the center of campus. More than 100 have been arrested. In-person classes have been canceled after eight straight days of demonstrations. I was on that campus earlier today to interview the House Speaker, Mike Johnson. This is what I saw and heard. Johnson walked out. There were hundreds of people on the steps where he and other GOP representatives that he had brought along with him in his entourage spoke. They were, and I'm going to show you here, this is my uh, cell phone video, chanting free Palestine, heckling, booing when Johnson called for the president of the school to resign. They were not friendly. They couldn't actually hear the speaker, which I can tell you is a good thing, because much of what he said would have incensed that crowd. And after the press conference, the speaker's team moved us inside in the, into the Columbia Library, where the speaker did interviews. They put that entire space under lockdown because of that large crowd. So here's our conversation right after that, hundreds of people outside when we moved, rushed inside, inside the library, moments after that test, tense press, press conference. Well, Speaker Johnson, you know, thanks for your time. Obviously, there's a lot going on in Congress right now. Um, you've chosen to travel to New York, and uh, as you were just out on those steps calling for the resignation of the president of here of Columbia, um, there was heckling, there was shouting, that was not a warm reception. Enjoy your free speech. Were you surprised at all by what happened? Well, there was a sea of students who I, I apparently have been involved in the protest here, and I'm not surprised that they didn't welcome our visit because we're calling out their activities. What The, the point we tried to make today is that this is not who we are as Americans. This is not uh, an expression of the, the First Amendment. This is not an exchange of ideas. This is, this is threats and intimidation of violence against Jewish students for who they are, for, for their faith. And that's a terrible trend that's going on in the country right now. We have these similar types of activities and, and, and what are becoming violent protests on campuses around the country. And members of Congress, I believe, have an obligation, a responsibility to speak about this and to, uh, and to demand that it come to an end because it's not good for us. The main thing they were chanting was free Palestine. How is that anti-Semitic? Well, what's anti-Semitic is that Hamas endorsed this protest today. Within the last two hours, they issued an endorsement statement and heralded the students here and said, These, this is the next generation of leadership in America. Um, if you're getting endorsed by Hamas, that's not a good look. It's not a good sign. Some of these students apparently are unaware of the atrocities of October 7th, or they're denying it. They deny that women and children were brutally raped and murdered, that infants were placed into ovens and cooked alive. The things that happen there are unspeakable, and yet they're out there waving flags for the very people who committed those atrocities. This is, this is not who we are. Speaker, in those early days, um, you know, I was in some of the kibbutz, and you could smell the death and the bodies. Um, it was horrific, and yet what's happened since has been horrific, too. And th there's a student here, a PhD student at Columbia. I wanted to quote him. He is Jewish. He has written a testimonial about what's going on here right now, his experience on campus. And, and he says, I'll read it to you, the most pressing threats to our safety as Jewish students do not come from tents on campus. We should be focusing on the material reality of war, the munitions our government is sending to Israel, which kill Palestinians by the thousands, and the Americans participating in the violence. Do you think that protesting the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza, protesting the tens of thousands of innocent people who have died there, is anti-Semitic in and of itself. I, I think there's always a place for debate in the free exchange of ideas, but let's not equivocate on what's happening in Hamas, with Hamas and in Gaza. This is a battle, as Netanyahu said, Prime Minister Netanyahu said, between good versus evil, light versus darkness, civilization versus barbarism. This isn't a close call. We have terrorists who preyed upon and attacked viciously and killed many innocent Israelis. And the idea that they would be out here in support of that Hamas is using civilians as, as uh, shields for themselves. They put their, their operations under hospitals and schools. They, they, are, they are using civilians in a theater of war. And so it's difficult. Why would someone blame Israel for trying to stamp out the very terrorist threats that are right there on the doorstep? We should not be dictating to Israel their military strategy. We should be supporting our ally, which is the only stable democracy is in the world. Is there anything East. Israel could do that would be over the line for you? Because when, when you talk about stamping it out, I mean, Many innocent children have died and are dying at Israel's hands and the IDF. 
they, they have, there have been civilians murdered, but that is not the fault of Israel. It's the fault of the terrorists, the Hamas uh, operators and soldiers, the terrorists who have used these people and put them into harm's way. Israel, I'm convinced, is doing its very best to prevent civilian casualties. But this is a war, and they're fighting for their very existence, and they are not the aggressors. It is the other side. Some of the people here seem not to understand that, and I, I think that's a real problem. We can debate the merits of all these things, but what they're doing here is intimidating Jewish students. That's the thing that is so problematic. All right, so let me ask you about that, because when it comes to that, the NYPD, at least as of Monday, have said they've not received a single... Uh, call from Columbia University of reports of any physical harm. Well, no physical harm. Right, right, but you have to speak to these Jewish students who are in fear of their lives, who are cowering in their apartments right now, who are not coming to class. In fact, the administration recognized the threat was so great they canceled classes. Now they've come out with this hybrid idea. Well, if you're Jewish, maybe you do want to stay at home. Maybe it'd be better off for you. It is so discriminatory. It's so wrong in every way. The responsibility of a university administrator is to keep peace on campus and ensure the safety of students. Job number one, if they're incapable of doing that, then you need different leadership. I, I think this is time for a really strong hand. I'm trying to understand, though, why, as Speaker of the House, this is an issue you would want to get involved with. It's a private university. <laughs> it's an issue happening here. Why is this something that you are choosing to get involved in and calling for the removal of the a president of a private university? Well, they, they receive federal funding as well. And, and Congress is looking at all of these aspects to determine how they're using those funds. Is that appropriate? If they can't uh, fulfill their basic obligations, I don't think the American taxpayers want to be funding this kind of thing. We know that professors are, are uh, engaging in this as well, some of the professors. Some have been supportive of the Jewish students, but I believe it's a small subset for what I've told. Um, they've allowed this to go on, and it is not okay with the American people. This isn't a, a partisan issue. This is about right and wrong, and we've got to call it for what it is. And so when, when people talk about genocide and say that Israel is a, a, engaging in genocide, do you think that that is a legitimate conversation that they should be allowed to have as part of First Amendment rights here? Or well, no? of course. Look, I was a First Amendment lawyer for 20 years. I went to the courts and defended the, the, our First Amendment freedoms, religious expression, the right of free speech on campus. I litigated those cases. Of course, the university is supposed to be the free marketplace of ideas. But when you shout down and physically threaten with intimidation and threats of violence the other side, that is not a, a peaceful expression uh, as peaceful, peaceful exchange of ideas. That's something very different, and that's what we're saying they need to get control of. When they camp out around the campus and they prevent students from exercising their rights, mm -hmm. that's the problem. Before you go, um, obviously we're here in New York as there's been threats to your speakership back in Washington. Um, what does it say about your standing as speaker that you are here at Columbia University dealing with this issue right now? The Speaker of the House is, has a, a very important constitutional responsibility. It's, it's an, an officer listed in the Constitution. The Speaker speaks for the House of Representatives, and I felt it was very important, important for that voice to be heard, not just about what happens at Columbia, but about what is happening right now around the country. And, and we have to stand unequivocally for the right and the good. And I'm calling on all my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to speak out against this. Not to, not to uh, endorse it, not to, um, to, to coddle these people, but to say this has to stop. We have to treat every single person with dignity and respect, and that's not happening here, and it's an atrocity. Speaker Johnson, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. I conducted that interview just about uh, a couple hours ago.